morning, I, I was in another room and I explained uh, what is Podman desktop and uh, what does it do with uh, container engine. Not only Podman, because it works with, uh, with uh, Lima and Docker. And now I will go a little bit fast forward on all of these questions and uh, try to uh, do stuff with various Kubernetes, break stuff, maybe some live demo will not work, but that's okay, okay? I'm super stressed uh, for the live demo, but that's the most important part. So, uh, why, so why we started Podman Desktop? Uh, uh, it's, uh, so there is one thing is that Docker, Docker Desktop changed uh, the license and uh, it opened the possibility to, uh, to start a new project. That's one thing. But also it's that with Docker Desktop and Docker Compose, uh, you end up in development with, uh, with uh, something that you cannot easily deploy in production. And uh, that's you. And even worse, if, if it's uh, so, if it's, if it's Kubernetes, it may not work. And if it's OpenShift, you're almost sure that it w won't work. And and so the idea is to shift less things. Is that uh, rather than having a container that work in development, and then you go in production and you discover that it doesn't work, to uh, give to the developer the possibility to uh, test as fast as possible, that's what they are doing, is working correctly uh, on Kubernetes and OpenShift, okay? Uh, this is another very beautiful thing. I'm not able to do, to do a beautiful dry, dry picture like that, so that's, that's the idea. And uh, the idea is that Pondon Desktop is not only uh, uh, controlling the container engine, Podman engine, or Lima, or Docker, but it's also playing with Kubernetes. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, that you have just one click, or a few click, to do, to uh, transform what works on your container engine into something that works on Kubernetes. So, that's the default dashboard put in very small to see everything. One of the things that, is, uh, that, is, that will happen next is uh, the design of this, uh, of this dashboard. <coughs> um, yes, our, our reason to do that is uh, containers are Linux. So, yeah, okay, you have Windows containers, but nobody uses them. And uh, if, when you want to, to run containers in production, they will run on, uh, on Kubernetes and uh, they need to be uh, Linux containers. And on uh, Windows and Mac OS, it means you need to run a virtual machine with Ponan in it, or with a container engine in it, and uh, yeah, that was not easy. Um, so uh, the, first, the first task of Ponman Desktop was to build, a, build an installer that helps you uh, install, initialize, everything, just, uh, just, uh, ah, it's not here. So, we have installer for Windows, Mac OS, and uh, so we have maybe five different installer for Windows, and we have one installer for all Linux. <laughs> Flat pack for Linux, and uh, for Windows, we have an MSI, a uh, 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 an executable that you don't need to install, uh, Shoko installer, Winget installer, and uh, fully air gapped uh, installer. So, a lot of options. For macOS, same thing. We have an uh, installer that works on, uh, on multi arch, and then an installer that works on only on the uh, Intel or on the IRM. So, that was the first, the first uh, stages of Podman Desktop. So that was being able to distribute things and to, uh, to install. Ponman desktop and Ponman uh, <coughs> everywhere. That's done. Uh, and it's stable, let's say. It's, it's stable. It works. Now, we have some bugs sometimes, but the, the most of the bugs are not here anymore. Um, then, 
feature run containers. So you can uh, pull image, push image, uh, build image, uh, configure registry, uh, and you can run uh, Docker Compose. For the people who are behind the proxy, uh, we have options also. That was uh, something that we built mm, in uh, January, February. So you can configure a proxy. Uh, you can uh, you can add your own image registry, and you can uh, install in Airgap on the not if you are in jail. And um, uh, other thing, if you have already a Kubernetes configuration, you can you can uh, you have access to it, so you don't need to. So if you already have your uh, remote uh, Kubernetes cluster, that's um, already available. Uh, in, uh, in Podman. Then the basics, I, I will go fast because uh, I spoke of that this morning. So basics, creating a Podman machine, pulling an image, starting a container, building an image. If you want to go to the slides, you can look at it and you have uh, small uh, videos for everything. But um, I will uh, fast forward on that. OK? That was the session of this morning. So this is, so this is where, where I will start from uh, now. And I will try to uh, make demos that work. OK? So uh, who is not familiar with pods? Well, everybody knows, so that's good. Um, so uh, I will st start from the situation where on Podman, so on the container engine, I have a pod running. And now that I have that running on the container engine, I want to push it to some Kubernetes. OK? And. Um, so, if you have already one Kubernetes engine you, uh, configured, you can use this one. But then for, for a developer comes the moment to say, okay, I want to run my own Kubernetes, so I want to, but what, what, I, what can I do, what can I run? And, uh, and uh, we have started to create some extensions that help you initialize Kubernetes clusters. The first thing, the developer sandbox, it's an it's a OpenShift cluster managed by Red Hat, uh, where you have uh, OCP, the OpenShift container platform, plus some developer tools, like uh, Enchart, uh, the Red Hat Builder Image Catalog, OpenShift Data Space, and S2I, okay, these things. So something in plus, and uh, a lot of restrictions. So you are a developer, you cannot be an admin. Uh, after 30 days, your, your sandbox is uh, disappearing. Uh, you can only work on one namespace, one project. You are limited in RAM, you are limited in storage, and if you start a pod after 12, 12 hours, it's, uh, it's skipped. Okay? So that's, let's say, that's the trial, uh, demo trial mode. You want to, to, to start with it, you, are, you test it, but uh, you cannot really work a long time on that kind of stuff. Then you have the option to install uh, OpenShift Local. OpenShift Local, that's another, another banner that you can install via open desktop extension, a little bit like our main sample map. And then when you have OpenShift Local, you still have to choose between two bundles, so two, uh, two versions of uh, OpenShift that you can install. You have one version that is OpenShift, just single not OpenShift, and uh, where you have all the features that you find OpenShift, uh, you need. Uh, I don't care about that. Um, you need uh, so you need quite a lot of uh, CPUs, so quite a, quite a lot of resources. But that's at the moment that's what is working well, the best if your laptop is uh, strong enough. And then uh, we have uh, MicroShift, that's. Uh, 
only networking in Grace Storage Helm, so nothing else from, uh, from OpenShift. Um, that's, let's say, yeah, that's like the container engine plus, uh, plus networking, plus ingress, plus uh, deployments, but quite, quite restricted. And that's a very cool um, solution, but it's very young. So at, at the moment, we have some, uh, some stability issues with, with it. Uh, I believe the first version that's working has been out uh, two, three, three weeks ago. But that's, that looks great for the, um, for the future. You know, if you don't want to, just because you want to, to test Things that things work on Kubernetes and you don't need monitoring, that's, that's a good option. And last option is uh, Kind. Kind is just a Kubernetes running in a container. And uh, that's, the first, that's the first thing that we built. So in Poland Desktop, that's the first uh, plugin that we created. And um, that's the... <laughs> It, it should have been the first demo that I make, but <laughs> it's broken. Um, uh, no, on my machine it's broken, and uh, uh, I cannot start a, a root full Pullman. So root full Pullman is completely unstable on this laptop, and uh, I don't know why. So developer sandbox, should I do the video? Or, or do the, 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 the live, live thing. Huh? So, the developer sandbox. Uh, that's the console of the developer sandbox, and that's the console for uh, OpenShift Local. So, they look quite the same. Um, so, Developer sandbox. I I have one project here. Uh, I cannot create project and uh, and uh, now workload. It's empty. I'm not cheating. No? Mm -hmm. uh, and now I will switch my context to my sandbox. First, showing that here I have uh, I have a sandbox in unknown mode. That's not good. Ah uh, no. Good, good, good. It doesn't work. I will do the demo afterwards then. The problem is I started my laptop without the network. Podman desktop started without the network and uh, things are broken. Uh, so let's start with the, then with the demo on OpenShift local. And then I will restart Podman desktop and hopefully it works, okay? So on OpenShift local you have, you have uh, two um, you have two profiles, uh, an admin profile and a developer profile. And uh, last time I tried with the developer profile, uh, I could not do everything I wanted. So let's try safe with the admin, uh, admin profile. And on uh, OpenShift local, here I am the admin. And uh, Let's try something that I've never done. 
is uh, uh, how to create how do I create a project? Ah, yeah. So now I have a project that is entirely empty. And entirely empty. Where is the rabbit? Not in my pocket. Uh, and I have my pod now. And I will deploy to Kubernetes. Uh, and now it's asking me to deploy in the Kubernetes context. And uh, I can choose my project, which is the last one. That's good. Up. And uh, let's try it. It worked. So I have my pod running here. I can see it in the console. If I look here in the Podman desktop, I see here that I have this. Uh, it's good, big enough? Yeah. So this pod is running uh, in the Kubernetes in uh, the context uh, CRC admin. Okay, the, the namespace is not displayed here. So that's some of the, I don't know, some of the things that may change in Podman desktop at some point is that the, the interface is super simplified, super simplistic. So there are things that we don't show. We don't show the namespace. The context is uh, in the sysstray, so do you don't see that in the interface. Uh, and uh, we don't show deployments, we show container, pods, image, storage, and that's, that, that's, what, that's it. So for, uh, you know, for an advanced usage, it may be not the best tool. But if you want just to move things from your container engine to Kubernetes without even thinking about it, and then you, you give the work of Pythoning to other people, that's very good. So I see my I see my uh, my pod here on the Kubernetes. Uh, I can see the logs of all my containers. Yeah, <coughs> that's good. I so search doesn't work here, but here search does work. So that's one of the hidden features that I have to show is if you click in the content, you do control F and you can search in the content. That's very useful. And now that you have something that you know that works on Kubernetes, and, uh, same thing, you can uh, copy the YAML and you put it in the code that needs to be deployed. And voila, that's done. Maybe you have to, to to clean up some things, like uh, the IP address. I'm not sure you have to put it uh, in, the, in the code for real, but you have already something usable, a good, a good uh, entry point. Another uh, hidden feature, when you go to the summary, you see that you have, uh, you have your, your containers, and the question is, how do you access to the app you deployed? And uh, oh no! Um, because I believe that will not work. Okay. Oh, I guess it works. 
that's perfect. I'm not sure it's the right one. Uh huh. Okay. Let's stop this one. Okay. That was the application on the, on the container engine. Okay? So that's one, that's one of the things that are still a little bit tri tricky now. Is now I have my pod running on my, on my, uh, on my uh, Kubernetes, but how do I see the app? And uh, that's it's not something that, we, that, that is easy <laughs> to do at the moment. So I had a question this morning about the evolution and the things that need to be better. This, this thing, for example. So this, this is leading me to something that is not the, the, right, uh, the, the right thing. And at the moment, the only, the only uh, way that I know is to go to networking uh, in root, and then you have your application that works. Okay. I can take a question at this moment on on the on the service. No question? Okay. Um, <laughs> Installing OpenShift local. Let's let's look at this. That that's not something I do a uh, live demo. It's, it it's, it takes too much time. Um, has someone already tried to install uh, OpenShift local before or not? And? It worked. <laughs> <laughs> Was it simple? Yeah. Um, how much time do I have? 12 minutes. Tw before the questions or before the end? Before the end. So uh, two minutes before the questions. You can take as much time as Okay. Okay. Uh, then, I have kind and, uh, okay. Let's try. <coughs> Let's try to see if uh, I quit on my desktop, start it again. If now my dev sandbox is fixed. <laughs> Windows. I forgot to say, I've been using Linux for 25 years, and for this project, I'm running Windows. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, 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 so it's still unknown or, or what? Uh, it's question time. So, okay, let's delete it and uh, retreat one. So, the name will be my sandbox. Uh, I'm already in it, so I have just. That's the sandbox. Copy login command. <coughs> login with the sandbox. You will see my token. Uh -huh. uh, I copy this line. So that's the things also that are, that are now that require still a little bit uh, of manual work. 
but it's very difficult to retrieve the information automatically. Maybe we will manage one day. And I paste my login command. And now, is it working? It's exactly the same as before. It's just, just, uh, just I started without network. So now I change my context to uh, my sandbox. And uh, I will. Uh, so I change my context. So now I don't see, I don't see the, uh, the pods and the containers that are running in my other Kubernetes context. So the, sometimes it's confusing. So you, you, you always see the container if you're cont in, in your container engine, but you see only the things that are in your current context for, for Kubernetes. So now I don't have access to the other one. I will, uh, I will deploy this one to Kubernetes. It's exactly the same thing, but it's in my sandbox. And uh, let's see how it works. Good. And now, if I go down, I have uh, my uh, pod running. Wonderful. But this time it's not local, it depends on all the network. And um, now I can take questions or I can fail uh, instantiating a kind uh, as you want. Okay, so I have a question. Um, how much in Europe do you think this pod that made in the Windows world? Uh, can you repeat? So how far is the awareness gap regarding the availability of Podman somewhere else than on Linux, if I can rephrase that, maybe? The availability of Podman in Linux compared to... No, 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 on other platforms. That's what I'm talking about, like, Podman desktop is not just for getting Linux, right? It's all fun. So Podman desktop is more for Windows app. Exactly. So, I'm so like I, 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 I have to repeat the question here. That's it. So the question, the question is, Podman Desktop is more targeted as uh, Windows <laughs> and Mac user than Linux. Uh, kind of. I'm wondering, like, how many people are actually installing it on Windows? Um, I don't. We have metrics on that. I'm not sure they are really good because you have to. Uh, so. You have to uh, allow for, met for a metrics collection at the beginning. Uh, we have very few Linux users. And then, uh, let's say, two third Windows, one third uh, Mac, and uh, two, two percent Linux. Uh, so that's really not a lot Linux. But we believe also that the propension of Linux users to say no to data collection is higher. So that's what we think. And uh, we think also that on Linux, you, are, you can install, so you can install the, the text user interface, you are already have it, so, you, so you, don't, you, don't need it, you, you don't need it to install Podman. So it makes that people who use Podman desktop just to install Podman are not user on Linux. Uh, so on Linux, the only reason to install Podman desktop is you want to do this, uh, container to Kubernetes, which is really a cool feature. Uh, or maybe if you want to visualize, um, to visualize your containers. I, I, I like it because the, it, it's really good, nice for me to visualize things like I, as container pods, images, and I have an overview of everything that is there. I like it a lot. Uh, to prepare this presentation, I have destroyed my Podman machine 10,000 times. So the, f the fear of starting from scratch and starting over is gone. And, and it's, it's, you know, the, this, and on Linux, I, I never, <laughs> I never put my image. So I do it when my disk is full. So it's, uh, 
I, I don't have the same, the same way of using Podman now on Windows and on Linux before. So it's, it's, changing, the be, it's changing the behavior. Uh, I don't know if it's for good or not, but I, I tend to be more tidy with Podman desktop <laughs> because, because it's cluttering the UI and it's like, I don't need this image, click, 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 click. It's uh, faster than just uh, than writing the command line or making a script to say, hey, all images I didn't uh, use since uh, two just, months. Just yeah. typing in system code. Yeah. Right. And, um, but there are, there are also quite some features that don't work well on Linux. For example, uh, the, uh, the proxy. The proxy, the, the feature that is made in Podman desktop is made to inject the proxy configuration into the Podman machine using the Podman machine API. But on Linux, you have your local Podman installation, so you don't, you don't use that. So uh, you should, uh, you have to, uh, to uh, edit your config file by yourself. So that's, that's something that's really, now, I, now I'm running Windows because uh, when the feature doesn't work, Maybe it doesn't work because it is on Linux because it's uh, it's an edge case, and uh, I don't say I'm I am super happy with it, but that's uh, like it is. Other question? Out of time or not yet? Three minutes. Three minutes. You have more questions? I can fail a kind installation if you want. So, most probably it will fail. Um, so, on, on, uh, on Windows, uh, when you want to create a kind cluster, you need to have a rootful Podman. So, when you do a, a Podman machine installation, normally it's rootless. Just, if you need uh, to run kind, uh, you have uh, this kind of errors. And, um, and uh, <laughs> uh, since this week, so just this week on my machine, I cannot start, uh, no. When I start a rootful uh, Podman machine, this machine is just completely flaky. So it's, uh, I cannot see the, the containers. I, I don't know. I don't know what's here. It's Windows. That's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. And someone, someone asked me this morning why, why, uh, why, uh, so what, what I think about uh, CLI in Windows. So, in Linux, it's straightforward. In macOS, it's straightforward. You are, so, in Linux, you, are, you have different terminals, but it's, it's the same shell. And then we can talk about bash, ZSH, etc. But in Windows, for a starter, you have to choose okay, which terminal do you want. Do you want CMD? Do you want a uh, PowerShell? Do you want uh, a bash in your uh, Linux uh, virtual machine? Do you want git bash? Do you want a PowerShell but in administrator mode? So that's just uh, running, running CLI tools in, in, in uh, Windows is uh, it's, it's still a mystery to me. It's like, okay, uh, here, I, here I can run this command. Yeah, it works well on git bash, but then it doesn't work on CMD. Uh, it, it doesn't work by design. So it, it, Windows users are not, not, not doing shell because they don't like shell. It's because that. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's just... Um, it's broken, we are prepared. I'm trying to do, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a, uh, the tech writer for Podman Desktop. I'm trying to uh, run Antora and to do uh, usual tech writer stuff and it doesn't work. Out of time. <laughs>